Welcome to the American Story. We are grateful to all of you for tuning in each week and sharing these stories with family, friends, and neighbors. And we're grateful for your generous support. Thanks to you at year's end, we will have 129 evergreen episodes, a collection of stories about the things that make America the country we know and love. We will release our final episode on December 28. I hope each story contains some beautiful truth about our country that is worth hearing again and again. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. I call this one Democracy in America. In January 1835, the first volume of a book named Democracy in America was published in Paris. It was a great critical and commercial success. It went through seven printings in the next few years and was quickly translated into German and English. French critics, who were notoriously hard to impress, pronounced the book a masterpiece. The author, a young French aristocrat named Alexis de Tocqueville, became a celebrity. He was awarded cherished honors and prizes, invited to the most exclusive salons, and elected to the prestigious Académie Française. And his book has stood the test of time. Almost 200 years later, it is still regarded by many learned and able judges to be the best book ever written about democracy and about America. Alexis de Tocqueville was born in Paris on July 29, 1805, to an aristocratic family. Many of his relatives had been sent to the guillotine by the reign of terror following the French Revolution only 12 years before he was born. All of Tocqueville's writing would have in the background or the foreground an attempt to understand the French Revolution and the Anshan regime, the old order that existed in France before the Revolution. With democracy in America, he hoped to show France and the old world what they could learn about liberty from America and the new world. And ever since its appearance, his book has been increasingly read by Americans to learn more about themselves and about democracy. Tocqueville and his dear friend Gustave de Beaumont sailed for America on April 2, 1831. Tocqueville was 25 years old. Beaumont was just three years older. Their official business was to write a report on American penal institutions, but they had larger ambitions. As Tocqueville wrote before he departed for America, We are leaving with the intention of examining in detail, and as scientifically as possible, all the mechanisms of this vast American society, about which everyone talks and no one knows. Beaumont wrote to his father that we are meditating great projects, that he and Tocqueville would be visiting America's inhabitants, its cities, its institutions, its customs. We shall get to know the mechanism of its republican government. He hoped they might write a book which would give an exact conception of the American people, would paint its character in bold strokes, would analyze its social conditions, and would rectify many opinions which are erroneous. As things turned out, it would be Tocqueville who would write that great book. It took them 38 days to get to America. They practiced their English with fellow passengers on the way and arrived in Newport, Rhode Island on May 8, 1831. At the time, America consisted of 24 states, with 15 million people, 2 million of whom were slaves. They spent 271 days touring America and another 15 in Canada, traveling over 7,000 miles through 17 of the 24 states on horseback and by stagecoach and steamboats, through forests and on snow-covered roads and up and down icy rivers. They talked with everyone they thought they might learn something from and studied all the documents and writings they thought might be useful. Tocqueville shared his first impressions with a friend. Picture to yourself, my dear friend, if you can, a society which comprises all the nations of the world, English, French, German, people differing from one another in language, in beliefs, and opinions, in a word, a society possessing no roots, no memories, no prejudices, no routine, no common ideas, no national character, yet with a happiness a hundred times greater than ours. Later in his book, Tocqueville would famously write that a new political science is needed for a world altogether new, and he certainly conceived of his book as contributing to this new political science. One insight of his new political science developed more fully in his second volume, is particularly applicable today. 
This is his reflection that administrative centralization would lead to administrative despotism, a distant, all-powerful central government beyond control, managing the minute details of the lives of every individual. And one of the great barriers to administrative centralization was the voluntary associations that he found so characteristic of American democracy. The churches, business enterprises, sewing circles, sports clubs, hospitals, schools, charities, without which, Tocqueville says, civilization itself would be in peril. What he called the mother idea from which all his other ideas about democracy in America flowed was the idea of equality of conditions. Remarkably, another great man, an almost exact contemporary of Tocqueville, thought in the same way about democracy in America. Abraham Lincoln self-consciously sought and found a mother idea from which all his other ideas came and to which they always returned. And the central idea of all his political thinking and action was also the idea of equality. But in his case, it was not the conventional or providential equality of conditions, but the natural equality of human beings, the idea most famously expressed in the American Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. The moral fact that human beings are by nature equally free. And our greatest freedom is the freedom of the human mind to grasp the truth by which it should be guided. It is an astonishing fact that in his great book, Tocqueville never mentions the Declaration of Independence, whereas we know from Abraham Lincoln that he drew all his political sentiments from the ideas in that document. It is a fair bet that if you could read well Tocqueville's classic book and all of Lincoln's collected speeches, you would be well on your way to understanding democracy in America at a time when democracy and America desperately need your help. Thanks for being part of the American story. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. Visit our website at theamericanstorypodcast.org to learn more about these stories and how you might support the important work of the Claremont Institute.